Today I wanted to talk to you about airbrushing in face paint, body paint and special effects makeup. Airbrushing is loads of fun but when you want to get started I know it can be difficult and maybe you don't really know where to start so I wanted to make a first video on how to use the airbrush and for this I am going to show you the Pro Air mini compressor uh, with their dual action airbrush gun. I will explain some stuff about the compressor and also about the gun. I will talk about uh, different pressures you can put the airbrush on, how you can mix colors, how you can change colors, how you can clean the gun but I will also show you how you can make a base for a face paint or special effects makeup project and how you can use some stencils so if you are interested in some information about airbrushing then please keep watching because i will explain a lot of it in the coming video we got a new delivery with our famous pro air airbrushes and while unwrapping these I discovered that I never made a video on how to use these wonderful little machines so that is what I want to do today I want to explain the airbrush and show you what you can do with the airbrush if this is new to you let's start by saying this one is brand new and it this is how you get it. You get a hose and the gun with it, of course, because otherwise you can't airbrush. But this one is mine. So as you can see, it has been used a lot because I'm a great big fan of the airbrush and definitely this one in particular. So there is the hose and this is the gun that gets delivered with the airbrush. So what can I tell you about these babies? Well, this one goes up to 40 PSI, which is enough pressure if you want to use it for face paint or body painting. If you want to do an entire body paint, you might want a bit a heavier one, but if it's only face paint and a bit of the upper body, you are definitely good with a compressor like this one. So I mainly use this with Pro Air Hybrid products, but you can also put water-based uh, airbrush colors in it, like the Airline by Chameleon or Lux by Meron, but you could also use ink with it. That is by Pro Air as well, but is mainly for making temporary tattoos. Let's start by putting the machine on. Well, when you put it on, it immediately starts making noise. But it stops once the pressure in the compressor is to the 40 PSI. And when I will put air out of the gun, so by pressing on the little button, it will turn back on again with the noise. So this one is on 40 PSI. When you want to airbrush with a product like Pro Air Hybrid, you only need 18 to 20 PSI. So you can just turn this wheel down so you can get to that 20 PSI. When you do that, the air escapes from the chamber constantly. So the noise you just heard will be on constantly um, but usually when I make a base I just leave it on the 40 psi to make a very quick base and then I put the pressure lower to make details so I thought that it would be best to demonstrate the airbrush with making something simple on my skin and that is what I'm going to do with some stencils because if you start out airbrushing stencils are the easiest to use and that is why I wanted to show you stenciling today. But before we are going to put any paint on the skin I want to talk to you a bit about the airbrush gun. So this is a dual action airbrush gun and that means as much as there isn't any airflow when the compressor is on you will create an airflow when you push down on the button or the handle that is on the gun so when you push it you will feel the air coming out and the compressor will start making the noise again and you have to pull back on the handle to get paint coming out of the gun so a little feature about this gun is the little screw that is on the back you can open it and you can close it so if it's closed completely you can't even press the button or the handle that is on the gun because it's completely locked. So if you open it, you can push it and pull it back. Uh, the farther you open this little thing, the farther the needle can get back in that gun and the more paint can escape uh, at the front. So um, you 
want to play with how far you will open or close this. If you want to make very small details like veins, you will probably almost close this one, get a low pressure on your airbrush and then you can easily make stuff like veins. But for today we are not gonna do the freehand uh, details like veining because I want to start at the beginning of airbrushing and that is why I'm gonna use the airbrush to make the base of my paint so I'm gonna color my entire face blue just to match the background and then I'm gonna use some stencils just to show you how much fun it is to work with the airbrush. I decided to use one of the Pro Air uh, stencils that I have and this is one of them this is uh, called a Voodoo and as you can see it is blue and yellow in the background and then the parts where the stencils are are black. One thing you really want to remember when airbrushing is that you shake all the bottles very very well because any lumps in there will block your airbrush and you will have to clean it before you can continue working with it so just take your time to shake those bottles I always just put in a very little bit of color in the airbrush because a little bit of paint goes a long way so this color is bone um, and I'm just gonna get some bits of my skin in this color the airbrush is going to make a lot of noise so I will probably just mute the noise of the airbrush while airbrushing but be sure it makes the same sound as you just heard constantly so you might be wondering why these spots well i'm just looking at the picture that is with the stencil so this isn't really a picture but it's kind of easy enough to understand where everything goes if you don't want to work that way you could also just get the stencil and check where everything will be in a bit and then you know where you want to put the light or the darker spots this color is ice it is a bit more to the blue than the bone color is as I am working the colors from light to dark I'm just adding the ice color to the cup where bone is still in there as I use just a tiny bit of the bone I can just add the ice color and it will become a little bit lighter blue than we have in the bottle but that is okay because nobody is measuring if I put the exact ice color on the skin you do want to mix the color so you get an even color on there well to mix it you will block the tip of the airbrush and get an airflow going so you press the button and pull it back it will create little bubbles I don't know if I can show you that and the bubbles will mix the colors together and as you might have guessed I've got even a bluer color this one is called electric blue when it comes to airbrushing yourself, your nose is probably the most difficult thing to do because the airflow hits your eyes and you just want to close them. My solution is just spray around and look at what you did. If you are happy, it's good. If you're not, you just go back in with your eyes closed. That of course is different when you are airbrushing a model, which is way easier than airbrushing yourself. On to Flow Blue. And finally, this is cobalt blue. This is the darkest one I have. Now I'm gonna use a stencil. It isn't in the design, but I think it might be cool too. Usually these are used with face painters, but you could definitely use them to airbrush. So with stenciling, you should always spray your paint up close. So you won't get the overspray like I got here on my cheek. So I just got the airbrush too far off and then you get that overspray that will get paint outside your stencil time for some black in the gun and the stencils well this stencil is very large so pro air split it up in three pieces so one is for the nose and the mouth and i've got two sides of the face let me see how they get on there just like that you can't do this one on your own skin because you are looking at the stencil but I'm gonna try so I'll just put the nose on mine and let's see what we get that isn't really straight on my nose but well I couldn't see anything um, but I'm gonna continue with the right side of my skin Thank you. 
So doing these on other people's faces is kind of a breeze, but doing it on yourself is harder than I expected. This is the last stencil and a bit of it should be black and a bit of it should be white. So I'm just going to put in the black and then we're going to clean the gun together. Now I want to go from the darkest color we have, which of course is black, to the almost lightest color we have, which is bone. And to do this I need to clean my gun, otherwise I would get a very dark grey at this moment. So you will need a paper cup or something you can put the leftover paint in. I'll just pour it out and then you get a baby wipe. Or I do it with a baby wipe at least, I know there are different techniques to get rid of the color in your gun but well as you can see it's almost clean there is a little bit of black left deepest part of the airbrush cup um, and I will need to get rid of this but uh, that is not something I can do with a baby wipe and that is why I have some cotton swabs and my 99.9% .9 alcohol as this is a hybrid makeup so it's alcohol based i can't clean it with water and that is why i'm using the alcohol if you are using a water-based product please just use water instead of the alcohol so i'm gonna clean the front of the gun so be sure to pull the needle back before you start attacking the front of your airbrush gun you don't want to do anything to that needle and then I'm gonna make the bubbles just like I did when mixing the color so I can get all that pigment being mixed with the alcohol to get rid of as much of it as I can now I want to clean out the deepest bit of the cup on the airbrush and to do that I need to remove the needle because that is in the way I am getting the back of it loose you can just pull out that needle be careful with it because it is um, important to your airbrush and then i can get in there with a cotton swab and just clean out what is in there and i'm cleaning the needle as well as i have it out of the gun it's easy to clean so just go with the needle so you won't stick yourself it is sharp then you just gently put it back don't press on it too hard get that nice and steady again check if the needle goes back when you pull the handle get the back on there again time for some yellow like there was on the picture so i'm just going to basically follow that a bit A little bit of black to create some light shadows around the mouth area so I will get that gun closed a bit because I don't want that hard lines and I'll put the pressure from the 40 psi to the 20 so I have more time to make those shadows without having to rush them So I just quickly put on a wig to make this look more complete than it was just a minute ago only being a face paint. Well as you can see airbrushing is loads of fun and it's real easy. You can just put colors next to each other and put colors over each other which you can't always do with regular face paint. For instance the mouth is white when there was a dark blue under it well that is stuff you can do with the airbrush and if you start out airbrushing yes you definitely need to get a feeling of how to work with it and where the paint will be when you open the gun on your airbrush but that is something you could learn in about an hour and when you want to start i think stenciling is one of the easiest ways to start you can go freehand after that but then you have to practice some techniques which i will probably put in a video in the future but i wanted to get the basics out there today well i definitely hope you enjoyed me explaining a little bit about airbrushing and especially the mini compressor by pro air if you did don't forget those thumbs up and subscribe to our youtube channel in the link below to stay tuned on all the videos we upload to this youtube channel